Let's get started. Uh, thank you everyone for coming to uh, today's uh, physics colloquium. Uh, today we have Dr. Ping Wei. I uh, just want to give a brief introduction of uh, Dr. Wei's background. So he got his, uh, his PhD from the University of California at Riverside. He worked on uh, um, electrical properties of topological insulators and uh, thermoelectric properties of graphene, I believe. And he worked with uh, Dr. Jing Shi there at uh, Riverside. Uh, since 2011, he's been a postdoc at uh, uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology at the Department of Physics and Francis Bitter Magner, Magnet Lab. And he's working with uh, uh, Jagadish Mudera and uh, on creating quasi-particles in thin films. And that's what he'll be talking about today. And you can see his title is Quasi-Particle Properties in Tailored Heterostructures. So he'll start in just a moment. But first, uh, we have a gift that we give, uh, think we initially yeah. give every uh, okay. speaker. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thanks for the invitation, and it's my uh, great honor to uh, give, give the presentation here. So, uh, my name is uh, Peng Wei. Uh, I'm from uh, Department of Physics and the Francis Peter Magnet Lab of uh, MIT. So, today my talk. Uh, We'll be focused on uh, quasi particle properties in tailored heterostructures. So, this is the outline of this talk. So, for that, first, I'll give you a brief introduction of uh, uh, quasi particles and uh, what, what is, uh, how to create exotic quasi particles. And then I will uh, talk about my research from uh, four different uh, perspectives of view, uh, uh, showing you how I'm able to tailor that, creating the normal quasi particles and how to use, how to use electronic uh, ways to detect them. And in the end, I will show you the, my future perspective and the plan program in the future. So uh, first, um, a brief introduction of, of, of uh, quasi particle. So uh, quasi particle is actually the uh, property of electro electron, like uh, in a crystal, in a, in a solid, in a crystal. So imagine if you have a electron that that is uh, have a, its mass m zero, which which moves in a, a crystal with a periodic potential. Then this. Uh, uh, if you want to solve the equation of the electron, that, that must be very complicated because it, it, it experiences a complicated interaction with the ions or atoms of the lattice. However, the beautiful nature of solid state physics is that you can actually I, I, uh, make this uh, picture equal to another picture where, where an electron moves in free space, however, with a modified mass, what we call as effective mass. So this picture is what we call the quasi particle. Interesting thing is that the uh, Upon giving the effective mass, the effective mass actually reflects the interaction for, between the electron and the crystal structures. Uh, so the interesting thing is that the effective mass can be positive, which gives you an electron. It can even be negative, which gives you a hole. And even more exotic, it can be zero. It gives you a, what, what's so-called dark electron, that's in normal material like perfume. So, in, uh, so what, what other uh, quasi particle you can, you can build? Build in this system, and the answer is that you can build a lot, yeah, including what's a normal material like a, uh, Marana fermion, which is a particle of antiparticle, which is a particle with its own, uh, of its own antiparticle. So, uh, so as I, I show you, uh, the actually the property of the effective mass or the property of quasi particle will be tuned by the property of the material. So basically, you can uh, uh, classify the order of a material into two different categories. One is the based on the, well, the order of a material based on broken symmetry. The other is the uh, order of material based on topology. So this region, this regime is much new and recently been, uh, been uh, uh, extensively researched. Uh, there are a lot of extensive research on um, top topological order. However, for broken symmetry order, it has been uh, studied or uh, well known for a long time. For example, the universe is actually due to broken symmetry because it broke the mass and the anti-mass symmetry. So we are living in a world with a lot of mass. However. Uh, Scientists are, are discovering whether there are dark, dark matter in the, in the universe. So uh, besides that, if you break the crystal symmetry, uh, or if you, uh, if you have a crystal, it actually breaks the translation symmetry. That gives you a lot of uh, property of different crystals. 
And if you break um, what's so-called time reversal symmetry or immersion symmetry, which means you have all the electrons spinning the line to one direction, you actually have a magnetic order. So magnetic material you have, we have been very familiar with, right? Uh, one direct uh, uh, example is that how it improved uh, information storage in our laptop or computer. Another material, like if we break, uh, it's called a superconductor, which broke the uh, gauge symmetry or parent symmetry. That is also a normal phase order. However, uh, for breaking, breaking crystal symmetry, uh, or unique, u using unique crystal uh, crystal symmetry, recently people have found that graphene, because of its unique uh, sub-lattice symmetry, which is a honeypot lattice, it actually gives you a quasi-particle state, which I mentioned before, it has zero effective mass, that's a direct electron. However, besides that, another novel material called topological insulator that's recently been, uh, been, uh, uh, been uh, predicted and a lot of research uh, has been focused on this, this area is that, is that uh, shows that uh, this material actually doesn't rely on the uh, broken symmetry. It relies on some topological nature of the material. So to give you a brief introduction about this, so uh, the topological order of the material can be easily uh, 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 like uh, uh, com be comparable to the topology of uh, in, uh, in geometry or in, from that, that is, uh, point of view. So for example, the topology from, of a uh, torus is different from a sphere. So in the sense of that, if we make a loop uh, across the torus uh, uh, through the hole, and then you cannot separate the loop from the torus unless you cut them. However, if you make a loop around the sphere, no matter how you make the loop, you can always separate them. So this, this makes the intrinsic difference between the topology of these two objects. So if you compare topo topological band structure of a topological insulator with the band structure of a normal band insulator or trivial insulator, you can see the surface state of topological insulator actually constructed by the states from both the conduction band and the valence band. It's like you're bridging this uh, torus. So this kind of construction makes the surface state of topological insulator very stable. Because in normal band insulator, you can, always ha you can also have the surface state. However, surface state is constructed by the states either only from conduction band or only from valence band. That means if you have a little bit perturbation, the surface state can, can emerge into the conduction band and get destroyed. However, that cannot be done in topological insulator. That makes its surface state very robust and against from impurities, actually from non-magnetic impurities. So the current uh, research of a topological insulator has been, uh, has been quite intense. Uh, so for example, one uh, uh, example material is called bismuth selenide. Actually, bismuth selenide is a kind of an old material, however, uh, previously, nobody has ever uh, tried to think what this surface state looks like. This material consists of what we call a chemical layer. It consists of uh, like selenium bismuth and selenium bismuth and another selenium, which uh, con con uh, con consists of five atomic layers. And then between this chemical uh, layer and the other chemical layer is a Van der Waals interaction or force between them. So it's kind of like a layer structure that you can do peeling off, uh, making a uh, thin plate material. So people has uh, how to probe the, how to how to see the surface state. What people has been using a uh, photo emission to see it. Yeah. So for the, with this picture actually shows the angle resolved photo emission, which people call ARCAS image of the surface state. And you can actually see the surface band connecting between the bulk conduction band and bulk valence band. And these two surface state uh, forms a cone here. That's a dark cone. And at the dark cone, the states of topological insulator also have the have, have the mass phase of a uh, direct electron which has zero effective mass. So another uh, interesting thing of topological insulator is that previously I mentioned there are two orders, uh, different orders. One is topological order, the other is broken symmetry order. How, and uh, I mentioned also mentioned topological insulator is very strong. It's uh, hard to be broken. However, there is actually one symmetry that if you broke that, which called the time reversal symmetry. If you broke time reversal symmetry, you can actually broke the direct home of topological insulator, make it a gap. So making this gap is very is substantial because if you have this uh, gap topological surface state, you can create a lot of interesting exotic quasi particles in materials. For example, you can create magnetic monopole. So there has been a long time that people doesn't believe there is a real existing of magnet, uh, magnetic monopole in nature. However, using the hyperstructure between topological insulator and the magnetic insulator, you can actually create an image of the magnetic monopole in the material. You can also intercorrelate uh, between the electric property, electric moment, and magnetic moment of uh, this uh, hyperstructure uh, together, which gives you topological magnetoelectric effect. Uh, one direct advantage of this is that you can actually use the electric field to control.
control the magnetization of the material, which is uh, quite useful in electronics. And what's uh, even more uh, advanced on novel is that if you combine topological insulator with this kind of a uh, gap, uh, uh, by combining it with magnetic insulator and the s wave superconductor, you can actually confine the uh, Fermi in the system. So as you can see, there are a lot of uh, examples of quantum particles. However, uh, how to make them? We rely, we, we rely on hyper structures because uh, you, need, you simply need to put different materials with different orders together to form a, uh, to form an interface state which has a, uh, has a combination of the nature of both of them. So what we do is uh, we actually uh, experimentally achieve the, uh, the, the system where we have a topological insulator and the magnetic insulator interface. So the magnetic insulator we use is European sulfide. And this is the system we wrote this a high quality layer, which is called a molecular beam architecture system. It is an ultra high vacuum system with a vacuum of a 10 to the minus 10 torque. And under that vacuum, we, uh, we turn on the source, uh, which, which is uh, either an infusion cell or the, uh, or, the, or the beam evaporation that evaporates material onto the substrate. So this, this, uh, under this ultra, uh, ultra high vacuum and clean environment, we can make the thin film very clean. For example, if we grow European sulfide on bismuth sunlight, this figure is a uh, uh, transmission electron microscope, uh, microscopy feature, uh, uh, figure. Now you can see that the interface between bismuth sunlight and European sulfide is very sharp. And you can see the clinical layer of bismuth sunlight and another actually, actually is FCC structure of the European sulfide. And the interface is uh, very sharp and uh, there's no impurities. So also it has been, it can be pr uh, proved by the X-ray diffraction uh, uh, analysis. So this kind of approach, uh, a unique advantage of that is when you, you, you can use European sulfide to, uh, to approximate, approximately induce magnetism into bismuth sunlight. And you don't have to dis disturb the crystal structure of bismuth sunlight in, in contrast to if you want, you, do, you dope bismuth sunlight with magnetic ions. So this makes the system very clean. So why we use European sulfide? So European sulfide is actually, uh, you can think about it as a semiconductor. It has a, however, it has a very big band gap, 1.64 eV, which becomes very good insulating uh, 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 when you marry the electronics uh, properties. However, another very important thing is that within that gap, it has very uh, little impurities. So a lot of the insulator it actually relies on the localization of the elect electron, uh, electro electron, uh, electron transport to become insulating. Uh, in, those, in those insulators, for example, multi insulator or cone insulator, they have a lot of impurities in the band gap. However, the clean band gap of European sulfide make it, make it very suitable candidate for tunnel barriers. We can actually make a uh, tunnel barrier down to one nanometer thickness, uh, one nanometer uh, thickness. And the unique thing of the European sulfide as a tunnel barrier is that it actually has the barrier height related to the uh, spin directions of the material. Which means uh, spin up have a lower sees a lower uh, barrier height compared with spin down electrons. This unique property makes uh, European sulfide a good spin filter. So as you know, if you study tunneling, so the tunneling probability directs, is, uh, is uh, exponentially depends on the uh, barrier height of the tunnel barrier. However, if you have a difference on spin up and spin down electrons, then the spin actually spin down electrons can be exponentially filtered out once you have a non-polarized uh, electron uh, current passing through this, uh, this uh, uh, barrier. And then when the electron uh, current goes out from this barrier, then you have a net polarization of the, of the electron, which is an essential uh, uh, case of how a spin filter works. And this is, is, very, uh, is very important for the spintronic applications. And uh, another interesting thing of uranium sulfide is that you actually, using this uh, internal exchange magnetic field, it can spin polarize the material that uh, combined with it that in a hyperstructure. For example, if you put European sulfide next to a superconductor, you can spin polarize the superconductor. So I think nobody, uh, like uh, naively speaking, like uh, nobody wants to put a superconductor between, uh, uh, make a, uh, put a superconductor like a, like a, next to a magnetic material because the magnetism will definitely kill the superconductivity. However, the intrinsic spin, uh, intrinsic exchange field or Zeeman field in European sulfide, it can spin polarized superconductor without closing the gap. So it actually uh, split the spin up uh, positive particle states with spin down positive particle state and creates finite spin polarized positive particle states. So that's a, another unique uh, property of European sulfide. And that also explains why we want to use this material in the exchange coupling. 
So for a study where whether there are any interface magnetization in this bilayer structure, we actually can see it from both squid measurement and uh, polarized neutron scattering measurement. So for the squid measurement, we can actually measure the bilayer as a function of the uh, thickness of neutron sulfide, and uh, which which gives you a, a magnetic moment uh, as a, fun, uh, a dependence when the thickness of neutron sulfide increases. However, what we actually, uh, if you extract, extrapolate this, this line, we actually find there's a finite intercept on this figure. So the finite intercept simply tells you that there are finite magnetic moments existing even when your chemical sulfide thickness is zero. So however, okay, however, you cannot have any uh, interface magnetic moment once the result of having your chemical sulfide. However, this extrapolation simply tells you that, that there are some magnetic moments in the system that not comes from the bulk moment of your chemical sulfide. So this moment can be calculated, actually measured by the squid. And this, this, uh, this interface magnetic moment it has also been confirmed by neutron scattering, polarized neutron scattering studies. So neutrons, uh, the non-polarized neutron scattering uh, uh, measurement actually uh, measures the uh, scattering cross-section of the material. And that cross-section is extremely sensitive to the material. So the neutron scattering can definitely tell you where the interface is uh, in the hyperstructures. However, as soon as you turn on the polarization, which the signal is sensitive to the spin or to, mag or to the magnetic moment of the material, and that follows this green curve. And you can see this green curve actually penetrates into Wiesmann selenide by about one or two nanometers. That's another direct proof of there is an induced uh, magnetic magnetization into Wiesmann selenide, which originally it is uh, non-magnetic. So how, to, how will this uh, induced magnetic layer behave during the transport? Then we actually study the uh, transport behavior of this uh, sample. We simply pa uh, pass a current through the through the sample and measure the resistance. And the magnetic resistance actually show very interesting features. So as you, you see, as you know, um, as I mentioned, European sulfide is insulating. So supposedly we don't marry any electric signal from European sulfide. However, bismuth sunlight, if it's a pure bismuth sunlight, it's non-magnetic. Which means if you scan the magnetic field positive way and negative way, the resistance dependence should match exactly well with each other. However, in this bilayer sample, we see we, we, we saw this resistance. That means that if you scan magnetic field positive way, the resistance develop a dip at a certain magnetic field. However, if you scan it back, the, the resistance develop, big, uh, develop a dip at the opposite magnetic field. So this the position of the dip matches very well with the coercive field of European sulfide. So that means the magnetic moment of uh, that means the electrical transport of this sulfide is tuned by the European sulfide due to the exchange coupling. And also another interesting thing is that we always see a minimum resistance whenever the whenever uh, whenever the coercive field of European sulfide reaches. So at the coercive field of a magnetic material, you will have a max number of domain walls. So naively thinking. The, max, the, the, uh, the, the lot, lot of domain walls will create a lot of scatterings, which will make your uh, sample more resistive. However, what we see is, no matter how we vary the magnetic field direction with respect to current, we always see a minimum resistance when the domain wall is maximum, which means there is an enhanced conductance when, when the domain wall, when the, when lot of domain wall exists. That actually explains very well in the topological insulator uh, 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 property because if you introduce a magnetic uh, magnetic layer on top of uh, on the top surface of topological insulator, then as soon as you create a domain wall, the, do uh, the along the domain wall, uh, the top surface state of topological insulator is gapless, which shows uh, uh, Dirac uh, uh, or zero effective mass. However, on each of the domain wall, you have a certain direction of the magnetic moment. As following back to what I said before, that magnetic moment breaks the time reversal symmetry and opens a gap on the surface state, which makes uh, the resistance larger. So that matches very well with what we see, and uh, it, it gives you a, a higher a higher conductance along uh, by having a lot of domain walls. How to, to further study uh, the magnetic transport property of this system, we perform a Norman's Hall effect measurement. So actually, Norman's Hall effect comes uh, very similar to the Hall effect. So actually, over uh, more than a, a century ago, so Hall demonstrated that in a, in a metallic sample, if you pass current along a channel and if you apply a particular magnetic field, 
then the electric, the electric transport will be, will be deviated on to, to one side of the sample, which gives you a transverse voltage. That transverse voltage is uh, directly proportional to the magnetic field. However, what Hall also discovered is that in magnetic metal, this, this uh, transverse voltage not only depends on linearly depend on the magnetic field, it also depends on the magnetic moment of the material. That gives the enormous term of the Hall resistance, which we call the uh, enormous Hall effect, and that's the direct signature of a magnetic conducting material. And in our sample, we indeed see uh, our Hall resistance, our uh, Hall voltage actually matches, scales very well with the magnetization of the material. So as you see, the red uh, curve shows magnetization of the layer. As soon as there is an onset of magnetization, which is uh, about pure temperature of European sulfide, there is also an onset of the Hall resistance, which comes from a enormous Hall effect. And also, if you scan the magnetic field, they also matches very well with, with each other. So like in one word, in this system, we actually create a noble ferment and metallic states. However, the ingredient we use is a bismuth selenide, which is non-magnetic and semiconductor. And we also use European sulfide, which is magnetic and insulator. However, if you put these two things together, you actually create some noble states. That state is a ferment and metallic state. It combines the property of both the material. Yeah. So up to now, I'll show you how to induce a broken time reversal symmetry in topological insulator with European sulfide. Then the question comes, well, is this kind of approach the only, only, will this kind of approach only work in topological insulator? Will it work in other normal materials? And the answer is yes. We actually uh, uh, move forward to see if this method can also spin polarize direct electrons in graphene. So the idea is simple. We also make graphene the European sulfide type structures. And in this type of structures, our goal is to create relativistic spin polarized direct electrons. So how to do that? Uh, we still use the same uh, uh, high vacuum, uh, uh, high vacuum, uh, uh, multi-layer growth technique. We actually um, fabricate our graphene device uh, in the beginning, and then we load this sample in, into uh, into a high vacuum, ultra high vacuum, and we clean the surface of graphene. And in, in situ, we deposit European sulfide, which forms a high quality interface. So this this kind of interface, because of the magnetic moment in European sulfide it will Zeeman split the Dirac cone of graphene. So you can see following this figure, so spin up cone will, uh, Dirac cone will move up, spin down cone will move down. So this kind of uh, uh, Zeeman splitting give you a very interesting phenomenon because if you place the Fermi level across, uh, close to the Dirac cone, you actually have, can have both spin up holes and spin down electrons. And as I, I mentioned before, I, uh, in the presence of a magnetic field, you can actually separate spin from uh, spin up from spin down electrons on two opposite directions. And we can use a similar Merriman schematic uh, shows in this paper, which called a local Merriman to detect the magnetic uh, uh, induced spin polarization. And our uh, result uh, actually shows, uh, compared to the, uh, from the uh, pristine graphene uh, uh, with the graphene European sulfide hydrostructure, we can see the non-local signal, which signi signifies the spin polarized uh, ele uh, uh, electrons or holes. It reaches almost one order of magnitude larger than the pristine graphene when we apply about two Tesla magnetic field, and that that indicates like uh, the exchange field of uh, the, uh, the interface of this uh, bilayer structure is much much large, larger than the field uh, that we apply here, and that signal also scales up, uh, uh, also also scale, uh, scales very well with the uh, 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 curative temperature of European sulfide. And also very interesting is that in this same system. We actually also observe the half integer quantum power effect, which is the signature of the Dirac electrons. So that means that in this hyperstructure, we maintain two things. We maintain the Dirac electron of graphene, and we also include the spin polarization. So that you can see that's how the powerful of uh, this uh, hyperstructure is. Yeah. So up to now, uh, I've shown you two examples of uh, creating broken symmetry states. However, I only use the transport measurement to study the cross particle properties. Then, do we have other tools to study the interesting transport uh, properties of cross uh, particles? And the answer is yes. I will show you how I have been used to, to, to of uh, thermoelectric transport to study the uh, dark fermions in graphene. And to do that, we actually first we need to overcome some technical challenges. So conventional thermoelectric transport, people uh, people uh, uh, tends to marry big samples. 
and it's easy to uh, uh, create a temperature de uh, gradient for samples uh, about the, like millimeter scale. However, if you want to create a temperature gradient for graphene flake, which is about a couple of micron lines and only one atomic layer, see, that's a, that that has technical challenges. So as in this figure, you can see the gray region is graphene, and using the uh, nano fabrication technique, we can place microscopic heaters very close to graphene. This kind of dissolvable technique. Uh, gives you a, can can give, can can make sure like uh, the one end of graphene sees the uh, sees the temperature uh, or the temperature field of the heater very much, so it becomes very hot. The other side of the graphene entry, uh, the temperature drops down to the substrate temperature. And we also use we, in this kind of environment, we actually can make uh, gold wires that which act as a temperature sensor to monitor the temperature gradient. And our accuracy can go down to about a couple ten millikelvin across the graphene flake. And within that with that technique, uh, we actually can also apply a gate voltage to tune the uh, carry density of the graphene. With that technique, and uh, you can see, this is a thermal uh, thermal electric voltage of uh, of the response by uh, by applying a temperature gradient. You can see first, uh, it shows a sign change when you when you scan the uh, Fermi level across the dark cone, which means you change from a whole side to electron side. However, another interesting thing is that it actually the voltage has a unique dependence on the density of the Dirac electrons, which shows the uh, inverse of, inverse of uh, the square root of n. n is the carrier density of the Dirac electron, which is a direct consequence of the linear dispersion of, uh, of the Dirac electrons. Mm -hmm. To further study uh, how uh, noble the, transport, uh, the thermal electric transport is in this uh, Dirac electron system, we quantize the system into a quantum power regime by cool down to low temperature 1.6 K and apply a eight Tesla magnetic field. In that case, the electron forms nano levels and forms edge states. And in graphene, like a characteristic uh, uh, quantum hole state, state is this half meter quantum hole plateau, which indicates uh, Dirac electrons. However, uh, compared to the, this uh, hall, uh, quantum hole uh, environments, which is standard transport environment, our, uh, our uh, thermal electric environments, which is a CBAC coefficient and Nernst coefficient, also being quantized and shows a very uh, pronounced uh, field dependence and uh, carry density dependence. So if you focus on the Nernst signal, we actually can see there is a dramatic uh, or enormous Nernst peak uh, shows up whenever we change the carry type in the material or whenever we scan our carry density across the uh, DR cone of the material. This is very uh, interesting because uh, normally in a normal metal, Nernst signal is very small because of a certain cancellation mechanism, people so-called uh, Schrodenheimer cancellation. That makes Nernst signal uh, a small quantity, which you can also see when we add a lot of uh, carriers into the system, which makes it very metallic. The Nernst signal is small. However, as soon as we scan across the, the Dirac cone, where the carrier density mean, uh, uh, vanishes, there is a dramatic peak developed, and this peak is directly related to the scattering time of the system and inversional proportional to the effective mass of the direct electron of the electron. So the dramatic peak means that we have a vanishing effective mass in the system. So then the Nernst peak comes Nernst signal comes a very powerful tool to study the vanishing of the effective mass of the of the novel cost particles or direct cost particles. So up to now I have shown you how to uh, probe and uh, tailor the uh, cost particle in different systems. So what I'm going to propose on my approach is that we can actually combine the material uh, uh, material thin film growth or hydrostructures that can give uh, us a great a rich degree of freedom to tune the cross particle properties. In this, while tuning this, we follow these uh, three diagrams. So we combine the topological order of the material, and we combine the broken symmetry order of the material, and at the same time we include the interactions. So for example, topology, or topology order, which comes from topological insulator, if we combine that with interactions, for example, electron-electron interaction, for example, we can grow topological insulator on top of a multi insulator or condo insulator. At the interface, there will be some states that, that, that will carry both topological uh, surface state of the topological insulator and the strong electron, electron interaction. Then we can study the topological insulator under the condition of strong electron-electron interaction. And if we combine topological order with broken symmetry, as I already showed before, we can have the broken uh, induced interface induced uh, ferromagnetism and superconductivity. If we combine broken symmetry with uh, with, inter uh, uh, with interactions, for example, we can actually study how the strong electron, electron interaction 
plays a role in graphene, for example, or in monosulfide, which gives us a normal, normal uh, will give us a, no, a lot of normal quasi particle states. And all these these properties of quasi particle making quasi particles were based on hydrostructures. So there are early works of, of this approach. So done in our lab. So actually, Modara is my current supervisor, and Mosuri is actually a Modara supervisor. So they actually, uh, Mosuri, Tadro, and Modara, they actually make uh, similar approaches. For example, in this uh, this figure, they combine the, uh, uh, they make a hydrostructure of aluminum, aluminum and aluminum sulfide and aluminum. In this this hydrostructure, they combine superconductivity with ferromagnetism. So in this case, as I mentioned before, uh, the spin polarized superconducting quantum particles are created. So you know, even more advanced uh, multi-layer stacks, which combines the spin orbit from platinum, superconductivity from aluminum, and ferromagnetism from uh, gadolinium. So in this case, we can we can actually study how the spin orbit plays a role in mixing the, the different spin states of the quantum particles. So then, based on this idea, what other exam or novel quantum particle can create? Then I will show, I will tell you that we can actually use the same way to create a what's so called Marana Fermi. So what is a Marana Fermi? Briefly speaking, it's very very similar to what people what what the topological insulator is. So what I, I have mentioned that the topological insulator, the surface state, is a combination between the states from conduction band and valence band of the of the of the of the material. However, for a Marana Fermi, a Marana Fermi state can be think about as a coherent superposition between an electron state and the whole state in a superconductor. So this coherent superposition actually comes from electron can be thinking about the particle of a material, and whole can be thinking about that as an antiparticle of a material. So this kind of superposition makes Marana fermion an antiparticle of itself, which is a very novel. And uh, actually, there is a lot of uh, part particle physicists they try to seek Marana fermion in, in, in nature, which uh, they think neutrinos are Marana fermions. However, it's still under debate. However, like as you can see, how beautiful it is that we can actually study or create Marana fermions in solid state materials with uh, actually topological superconductor nanowire. So in this kind of nanowire, we can actually uh, isolate or separate uh, Marana fermions at two ends of the nanowire. So this kind of separation is, uh, is, uh, is very pronounced, uh, uh, substantial, because uh, this will give rise to what so-called fault tolerant quantum computation. So the idea of that is simply can be thinking, you can think about it because a Marana fermion is an particle of itself. So if you, as long as you separate Marana fermion from far away from each other, they don't, they won't have a quantum information, uh, they, won't, they won't have a wave function overlap. So their wave function is quite self-contained and quite stable. So that, that, that is a very robust as if you want to use a wave function of electron in your material to store quantum information because electron will eventually uh, exchange its quantum information from other electrons in the system and, or holes in the system and lose its quantum information. However, for Marana Fermi, that quantum information can be kept uh, for, for uh, as long as you separate the Maranas. So there are a couple of uh, experimental approaches to seek Marana Fermi. So the Marana Fermi will actually give you a zero bias, uh, uh, the zero energy, zero, uh, an, an energy, uh, energy level at a zero uh, across the superconducting uh, uh, gap of a superconductor. So this uh, zero, zero bias states can be detected using tunneling. That's actually uh, one uh, expertise uh, in our group. So for example, if you separate Marana Fermi into a nanowire, and you can, if you tunnel on at one end of the nanowire, so besides the, the quasi particle tunneling, the conventional quasi particle tunneling, you can actually observe there's a finite state, tunneling states at a zero bias, which is uh, one uh, evidence of the Marana Fermi. There are actually a couple of groups uh, showing the, showing the uh, signature of Marana Fermi by observing this uh, zero bias conduction peak. Uh, two uh, I, uh, example group is from a Delft, uh, Delft group. They use, actually use a Niemann T19 nanowire wire and coupled to a superconductor to probe the Marana Fermi. However, there, there are a couple of uh, weaknesses in their uh, approach because the spin orbit coupling of Niemann T19 nanowire wire is very small. It's about 50 micron electron volt. Uh, and the, however, the, the stableness of Marana Fermi relies on the stableness of the topological superconductor, and that relies on how strong the spin orbit coupling is. So that, that the small spin orbit coupling makes uh, Marana Fermi vulnerable to disorders, and also make the zero bias mode uh, hard to to be uh, attributed to the Marana, Mar to the Maranas. 
Yeah, another group is uh, from uh, Princeton. They actually use the self-assembled uh, ion atoms uh, on a superconductor lab to search for myonas. Uh, however, uh, this approach like, uh, uh, produced very short nanowire, about 30 nanometer. So the short nanowire makes myonas fermion easy to couple with each other. So our approach is different. So we actually use uh, following the same idea of uh, epitaxial uh, multi-layer growth and nanofabrication nano typing. We actually uh, you, you utilize the one-on-one -on -one surface of gold for, for the platform of uh, Mariana Furnace. So the, actually the, the theory part of this work is in collaborating with uh, Patrick Lee at MIT. So the uh, idea is to uh, actually, uh, by, uh, Zeman, uh, by creating the Zeman splitting on the uh, on the Rushbar, uh, on Rushbar states on the surface of uh, a long one surface of gold. After after you uh, open the Zeeman gap, then if you introduce uh, superconductivity, then you can create this uh, topological superconductivity. So uh, uh, another thing is that uh, uh, the uh, unique thing of our approach is this uh, high spin orbit coupling strength, which is 1,000 times higher than the minimum Timonite nanowire. That makes our system uh, Marana firm stable and uh, immune from the impurities or disorders of the material. And using our lithography technique, we can actually provide a long nano wire, which is a 10 micron length and about 50, micro, 50 nanometer uh, uh, width on its waist. And later on, I will show you how that is important for confining uh, Marana firmness. So coming back to the materials, so we can actually use the same gross chamber. And up to now, you can see how versatile the chamber is. The chamber actually uh, it can provide material from a uh, region from a magnetic insulator to topological insulator, and right now it can provide multi-layer structures for for looking minor firmness. So what we grow is we actually grow the netting on top of sapphire, and we grow one one oriented gold on top of netting. And I want to mention that here the thickness of gold is only four nanometer, which is very thin. So the surface, uh, the, 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 the actually the the surface energy of gold is very large. That has been common known, commonly known by people. So if you want to grow a very thin layer of gold, it's very challenging because gold likes to form island. It won't form discontinuous fuel. However, with our MV chamber and with, with our fine-tuned growth uh, capability, we are able to grow smooth gold thin films. That can be seen first by the X-ray diffraction studies. So here I want to emphasize, uh, besides the main peak, we actually can see the beatings of the lava oscillation. That comes from actually the interference of the X-ray uh, through the interface and top surface of the layers, and this is a 2D mapping of the of this uh, of this uh, scanning, and you can see this uh, uh, this uh, pronounced oscillations here along this line. And besides that, we can actually during the growth we can actually use the in situ way to monitor the growth or monitor the surface of the quality of gold. And what the technique we use is called the reflective high energy electron diffraction. That gives you the crystal structure of the top surface of gold because this, uh, this uh, electron diffraction uses a glancing angle electron beam which penetrates only one or two nanometers on top of the top surface of the film. And that, that, uh, the, this pattern actually shows uh, sharp strip, streaks and also shows a six-pole rotation symmetry which corresponds to the one-on-one -on -one orientation of gold surface. And another thing I want to mention is that you can see how big is the contrast between the standard sputtered four nanometer gold thin film that we have done to compare to our MB gold thin film. So the standard sputtered thin film uh, gold four nanometer will give you islands, very, uh, uh, very uh, obvious islands uh, of gold. It's discontinuous. However, with our, uh, our technique, we can actually grow large grains, smooth gold thin films. Those, give, those samples gives us a good platform for study uh, for the later on uh, to find marana fermions in nanowires. So to study actually the electronic states in this system, we actually can do tunneling. So tunneling actually is a very powerful tool to probe the density states of the material. So to make the tunnel junction, we actually uh, form a gold aluminum tunnel junction with a aluminum oxide tunnel barrier in between. So if we apply a voltage across the tunnel barrier, we actually can shift the Fermi level of aluminum with respect to the Fermi level of gold. And then the tunneling actually uh, happens between the Fermi level of aluminum to the same energy of the uh, position of gold here. So as soon as you uh, scan the Fermi level of aluminum uh, across the bottom of a gold, surface state of gold, you will see the onset of the, of the tunneling uh, conductance signal. And this, this onset gives you a position of the surface state, which is about uh, 470 mV 
below the, surface, uh, the Fermi level of gold. That matches very well with the RPAS study of the uh, surface state of gold. That, in, 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 uh, that further confirms our high-quality high field of our sample. So our goal is to introduce uh, superconductivity onto gold, uh, onto the surface state of gold. And nobody has ever shown that like, there is a uh, surface superconductivity using a uh, one-one surface state of gold. However, to probe that surface superconductivity, we still follow the same tunneling approach. We actually make tunnel barriers or tunnel junctions across this gold and adding multi-layers. We use the European sulfide uh, because that's that's a very uh, actually I like the material very much. That's a very good uh, tunnel barriers with a clean gap. And I use a top electrode which is superconducting as aluminum as a as a uh, top electrode. So the tunnel actually happens across aluminum uh, from aluminum across European sulfide to the top surface of gold. So this this uh, stack or tunnel junctions actually can be used to explore a rich uh, uh, spectroscopy of tunneling ranging from a normal, normal insulating to normal material tunneling to normal insulating superconducting and to superconducting insulating superconducting by cooling down the temperature. So as you can see, there are different uh, superconducting transition temperatures in the material. One corresponds to the to aluminum, the other corresponds to the vanadium. And that we, we, uh, one temperature is, uh, is higher than most of the superconducting transition temperature. We, you can see there is a negligible tunneling signal here. However, as soon as we cool down below the transition temperature of vanadium, it, the, the, the single gap feature shows up. That's a, that's a superconducting tunnel. And then as soon as we cool, the, cool down the temperature below the transition temperature of the lunar, it shows an even rich spectral, uh, spectrum of the tunneling conductors, which mimics the tunneling of a superconducting insulating superconducting tunnel. So normally in this kind of uh, two superconducting tunnel junctions, you will have a, a tunneling peak uh, with two peaks on each side of the of the bias voltage. However, what we see is that we actually see uh, there are four peaks on each side of the tunneling conductors. So those four peaks actually correspond to one superconductor which has two gaps, and the other superconductor has one gap. So that model is very simple. So aluminum has, has one gap, however, on the other side, which is combination of gold and vanadium. So there, for the gold side, there are actually two gaps. One is uh, one one we we can uh, we can think about it. That's uh, because the proximity effect of vanadium. That's the superconductivity of a bulk state of gold. So the other gap has to come from the surface superconductivity, which will be smaller. And what we calculate is that it's indeed very small. It's about 0.38 mV, which corresponds to a TC of 2.5 K and a coherent coherence length of 460 nanometer. So here I want to emphasize the coherence length. And uh, before that, I want to say that. This actually is the first time people has ever been able to induce superconductivity onto the surface state of gold. And coming back to the coherence length, because it is a 460 nanometer, and the Mariana Fermi actually, the spatial span of Mariana Fermi is about the superconducting coherence length of the material. So that makes the challenge of making the nanowire. So if you want to separate the Mariana Fermi far away from each other, you need a nanowire. Uh, with a length much, much longer than the 460 nanometer. So that's why it can uh, shows contrast to the previous uh, other experimental approach. If you have a very short nanowire, for, for example, 30 nanometer, it's hard to, to have a clean or isolated Mariana state. However, with our lithography techniques, we actually actually uh, develop a, a unique lithography technique without disturbing too much about the uh, architectural thin films. So what we here we use actually organic mass for pattern the nanowire. So this is actually uh, the mass uh, with, a, with a size uh, width of about uh, 60 nanometer. And the length of the gold nanowire actually the pattern is, is about 10 micron. So this gives us a very good platform for studying the Marana Fermis. So right now we actually, we are tunneling, uh, we have, this is another uh, device figure. So this is a gold nanowire and we're making cross electrode with a tunnel barrier in between. So we actually study the tunneling onto the gold nanowire. So and that's an ongoing experiment so, uh, to probe the Marana states in this system. So up to now, like, uh, I'll show you a couple of examples. So what are the futures? What, what can we do more of in creating novel positive particles and using these novel positive particles? So first, a very exotic or interesting or exciting field is to breaking Marana from this. So as, as, as it has been proved so far, our approach is the most uh, closest approach to realizing what's so-called breaking circuits for Marana's. So a uh, simple ex explanation of what is breaking is, is that 
as I mentioned before, one, one uh, a Marana fermion, you can think about it uh, separating one electron into two Marana fermions, or separating electrons, one electron half and half into two Marana fermions. So each Marana fermion will carry some quantum information of that electron. And if you have another electron, you can separate it, it either into two Marana's. Right now we have four particles, what we call Marana fermions. These two uh, carry some quantum information from uh, electron B, and these two carry quantum information from electron A. So as a particle of Marana fermion, what if we exchange a pair of them? We exchange A2 and B1. So after exchange, then the combination of A1 and B1 will be a combination of wave function from both electron A and electron B. That is a prime, primary, uh, primary uh, schematic or uh, 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 tool to create solid state entangle system. So actually you can make an entanglement between the electronic wave function of uh, electron A and electron B. So this is a simple braiding. There can be more, uh, more, uh, more complicated braiding. In that braiding can make even more exotic uh, entangled state. And the basic braiding circuit, what I show here and I propose here, has been predicted by a theorist which is uh, from the uh, Binnaker's group in the Netherlands. So this braiding circuit can be already made. So for example, we can make our gold nanowires on the Nebium Island. And the gold nanowire will follow these uh, T-junctions, what we call it. And uh, this, this, uh, this Monadium Island will, also, will, uh, will be breaked from another big island by Joseph's Tunnel. And we can use a metallic wire to control the flux of the Joseph's Tunnel. That's already very uh, mature. So the figure here shows one example of, of, of this, uh, this uh, device or uh, approaching to that device. So as you can see, is that this is a Monadium Island. And there's a gold nano wire making on that. So this device, we actually try to study, we want to study the superconducting tunneling through the gold nano wire, which is, uh, which, which is uh, Joseph tunneling across a uh, lateral split Joseph junctions. So the, the gap here we made is about one, 100 nanometers. And this is a typical uh, Joseph tunneling con uh, differential conductance curve. And uh, as you can see, with the similar approach, we can actually make uh, this circuit very, uh, very easily. Yeah, so besides that, uh, as I mentioned before, we, uh, we have, I have already shown you there is an interface uh, magnetic, uh, magnetic, uh, magnetization used at the bismuth sulfide and looking sulfide interface. And along the domain wall, we have seen there is enhanced conductance. And that domain wall actually can provide you more exotic uh, physics. Because if you create the same domain wall in a two-dimensional TI, like very thin bismuth sulfide thin films, and along that domain wall, you can actually trap what's so-called fractional charge state. That fractional charge state is another normal quasi-particle that hasn't been explored by people so much. And it is the topological nature of the, of the material. And it can be also used for quantum computation. And there is a theoretical model which has shown that this uh, half-charge state actually exists uh, along the domain wall. Uh, whenever there is a, there is a magnetization change, on top of a uh, topological insulator uh, thin fuel. So we can use similar tunnel junction to probe that uh, space. And as I mentioned before, because the versatile of making tunnel junction, we can actually use a superconducting top electrode or ferromagnetic top electrode as a probe, which is very sensitive to the magnetic moment or, or, the, or, or, or probe, or is very sharp to probe the uh, uh, states uh, at the at the, uh, in the, uh, the bismuth cyanide part, or in the topological insulator part. So besides that, what I, another thing I want to mention is that, or propose is that uh, uh, previously I showed you how we create spin polarized direct electron in graphene graphene sulfide type of structures. However, compared with graphene, recently novel material like a transition metal dichalcogenide uh, emerges. So this, this uh, crystal actually uh, has a structure very similar to the uh, to the honeycomb lattice of graphene. However, it has a sub lattice symmetry broken, which, have, which gives you moly atom and sulfur atom on two different sub, -lattice, uh, sub lattices. That sub lattice symmetry broken actually gives you a band, uh, gap open at different k points. And also, because of the strong small bit of moly, moly itself, it actually creates spin, spin polarization that associates to two, two different values of moly sulfide. So, what if we uh, create the same Zeeman splitting of these two values. So we can think about coupling European sulfide to moly sulfide uh, using the same approach as graphene. So that kind of coupling actually Zeeman split the uh, spin up and spin down states at two different k points. 
So that splitting actually provides us the freedom to create what so-called varitronics. So because of the Zeeman splitting, that makes uh, spin up and spin down different. If we scan, if we place the Fermi level across only the spin up band, then we can actually uh, uh, make the system, uh, make the transport of the system dominated by only k value. So that's actually uh, what so-called value, value uh, polarization or valuetronics. A lot of people doing optics, they have trying to, they, they have been, uh, they have been trying to reach this valuetronics by using a circular polarized light. However, what they do is uh, is uh, non-equilibrium state. So it means that only this uh, polarization only exists when there is circular polarized light shining onto that. However, in, in our case, we can create the equilibrium state. As long as the magnetic insulated rotating sulfide is ferromagnetic, there will be a value polarization or value transport. So, so come to the end. So this is a, a lab that uh, I propose. So as I mentioned before, I want to uh, bridge in uh, different ingredients of the material. So I want to uh, add uh, the, the phase, uh, the the order of the material, phase order of the material ranging from topological order to uh, broken symmetry order and two interactions. To do that, a simple UHV thin film growth chamber will do that. And the approach I use is hyperstructures. And to and uh, besides that, I can add dimensionality to the material, to the hyperstructures. And you can see how the dimensionality actually tune, tune the positive particle states or it creates new positive particles such as marina fermions. And to probe the normal positive particles, I can use tunneling to probe the density states of the material. I can even study the charge and spin transport and also thermoelectric, which will give me a, a big, a rich uh, picture of uh, how the uh, electronic properties of positive particle is and how to use them. And the very important uh, point of view is that all my approaches related quite close to the devices. And the devices will eventually turn out, turn out to electronics, and which will improve our, for example, uh, computation or computers. Uh, my dream is like in one day we can use a quantum computer. Yeah, like the same as what we use here in, the, in our laptop, yeah. So in the end, I want to acknowledge my collaborators. So theorists, I collaborate quite a lot with uh, Patrick being at MIT and Yang Fu being at MIT. And uh, for experimentalists, uh, uh, like Jagdish Mudera is my current supervisor, and Jin Shi is my PhD supervisor, and I, co I collaborate with uh, Dress House and Jin Kong for the Mo Sulfide uh, projects, and Don Hyman, uh, who's from North e Northeastern University, I, I actually use their system quite, quite a lot. Jin Su Chen uh, from IBM Boston Research Center, I collaborate with her about the uh, uh, European Sulfide graphene uh, projects, and John Freeland is from Argonne National Lab, and uh, uh, Valerie Lauter is from Oak Ridge National Lab, that's for uh, spectroscopy, for example, XMCD and uh, neutron scattering. And uh, uh, Sapati is, uh, is our uh, good collaborator for TM uh, uh, studies. And JP Mosi, I actually collaborated with him on study the spin filtering using a, using a ferrite, because ferrite has a TC close to room temperature, or above room temperature, yeah. And also uh, uh, Marcus Lissabon, yeah, from Germany. From Germany. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Questions? Okay. So, about one of the pictures at the beginning, the topological insulator yeah. section with the cone and so on. Yeah. So, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is the direct cone of the surface, right? right, right. The the so, so what is so the effective, so the interaction there is, um, so it's not a pseudo spin, but it's the real spin, right. yeah, which real is spin. there, right? So it's yeah. sigma yeah. dot P, yeah, yeah, yeah. where right. sigma is not a pseudo spin, but right. the real spin. It's a real spin, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's actually, a, yeah, that, that actually is a, is, a, is a consequence of the surface state, or nature of the surface state, because actually the surface state, uh, it shows up because of the strong spin orbit coupling, and then uh, I think after this spin orbit coupling, it turns out that surface state has this spin momentum locking. Yeah, which means uh, it has a uh, op uh, opposite, it uh, has spin, uh, for example, spin uh, pointing this direction with a positive k momentum, and on the opposite k momentum, it has spin pointing, pointing to the other direction. Yeah, and the, the surface is spin locked. Yeah, actually, that spin, spin momentum locking is another unique. Uh, Characters of a uh, quasi particle of a uh, topological insulator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. is the, yeah, so it's the true helicity. Yeah, true helicity. As opposed right. to the yeah. pseudo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little helicity. bit di different from graphene. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what other 
Right, it's too general maybe a question. Yeah. What are the differences? The, I mean, the spectrum is still the same, of course. Right, right yeah, the so spectrum is the same. Uh, yeah. But then, I guess, the coupling to magnetic field perhaps is different. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah that, that's true. Yeah, because you see, with this helicity, right, so the, the degeneracy of the spin is, is, is lifted. Yes. Yeah, so that, 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 that gives you, a, that will gives you a, the open of the gap once you have a, once you have Zeeman speed. Right, right. However, for graphene, if you have a Zeeman speeding, you simply, you simply, uh, there's another, you, sh you shift the cone. Right. It doesn't open a gap at the your cone. Yeah. So that, that's, the, that's the difference. Yeah. I think. yeah. So, so, so maybe I didn't yeah, yeah. understand very well. So, so, so do people do that? So if you apply magnetic field yeah. to topological isolate, can you induce yeah. substantial gap? Uh, yeah, actually, there are, it's still controversial. I mean, uh, the real measurement, there are some measurements using r pass they, they, mm -hmm. they, they claim like they see a gap opening by, by putting some magnetic uh, like ion items on mm -hmm. the surface of the topological insulator. However, that's a little bit um, um, debatable. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there are, there are people trying to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, resolve this gap. However, the gap may be small, yeah. Actually, in our approach of this, this system, there will be a gap at the interface too. Yeah. However, um, yeah, there are a couple of reasons. Like, uh, for now, first, it's, uh, it's very small. Yeah. And also, we are actually trying to use autonomy to probe that gap. Yeah. Because for our pass, uh, you actually you don't have too much, too good resolution to probe very small energy scale. Yeah, using our pass. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, yeah, because I mean, on the surface of things, without knowing much about it. Yeah, yes, yeah. I mean, as soon as a light graphene, yeah, yeah, yeah. So as long as you put in some field there, right, yeah. you know, you immediately have a gap. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 right. yeah. So in the classic works of these pictures, like from Hassan and wherever it is, right? Yeah. And they never see any gap, right? They see uh, the structure. Yeah, yeah, but I think the same, same author, he has another paper, mm -hmm. he claimed to see a gap, yeah. Mm -hmm. He called call it a massive gap for me, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, like, like some question. Yeah, yeah. Could you comment on creating magnetic monopole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, right? Yeah, but the uh, uh, yeah, comment is this, yeah. So uh, you see this layer is uh, uh, here the top layer is a magnetic uh, insulator, like you from sulfide. Bottom is a topological insulator. Uh, what what it, how it creates this, yeah. So because uh, because of this uh, uh, this uh, uh, unique space, uh, you, you open a, you broke time reversal symmetry in topological insulator, it intrinsically correlates the, elect, elect, uh, the electric field response of a quasi particle to its magnetic response. So it means like if you have if, if you put the electric dipole on top surface of this uh, hydrostructure, you have an image uh, magnetic dipole inside, and then it comes up if you have a uh, electric monopole put it on uh, very close to the surface. Then you have an image magnetic monopole inside the field. It's not a not a real monopole, but however, it's a magnetic monopole develop a field magnetic field uh, direction uh, field uh, uh, distribution similar to a to a monopole. Yeah, yeah. This hasn't been uh, observed uh, by but there are people doing it right now. Yeah, we actually have some collaboration with uh, with uh, with people who has. Uh, Scanning squid, which can can we trying to see? Yeah, actually, it's a it's an intrinsic nature of the of this hyperstructure because of this uh, so-called <coughs> topological magnetoelectric factor. Yeah, yeah. 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 The other topology you were talking about is yeah. that in uh, momentum space, not the real space topology. Uh, I think it's in well, not right, it's in momentum space, right? Not right, definitely not in real space. I uh, think this. Is, this is actually a band, band structure uh, topology, yeah. So I think that, that you can think about it as a, as a because uh, usually in the material, conduction band and valence band are opposite uh, component of, uh, of the electronic structure. Usually they come from the different uh, locations or angles of the, of the material. However, the surface state is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, can be, uh, is a construction of, uh, of both of the states. So it's like a, it's, it's like a state that the bridging between the connection band and the valence band. It has both the component. Yeah. So it's more in the in the k space or in the from the from the from the band structure from the, yeah. yeah. So when you have those domain walls on yeah, the surface, yeah. so you're saying that these act like edge states. So are they? Yeah. I mean, are right and left movers separated between different domain walls, or does the domain wall have both right and left movers on? I mean, what? What should I think of as the edge states oh. on this domain wall? Uh, I mean, they're carrying current, presumably, so then they're 
Are they right movers or left movers? I mean, uh, yeah, only, only one mover is, is there, yeah. It's, uh, it's actually uh, usually on the top surface of a uh, topological insulator is helical. However, along the domain wall is chiral. So, yeah, you only have one mover yeah, uh, along, the, along, the, along the domain wall. Yeah, I think probably it has a, it has a uh, if you have a spin up and a spin down here, right? Spin up and spin down, probably you have, a, you have another uh, uh, spin uh, parallel to them and uh, like you're moving along the domain wall. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be yeah. pairs then. So if I think about a normal, you know, chunk of material and a vacuum material vacuum, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always have counter propagating edge modes. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In one of your last slides, yeah. you proposed that structure with molybdenum diselenide right, and yeah. ferromagnetic molybdenum sulfide right, yeah. and a spin injector. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the molybdenum diselenide is truly a 2D layer. Yeah, yeah. And it is gap. Correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has an effective mass that is finite. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So maybe for the people in the back rows, <laughs> if you don't mind uh, explaining what is the difference between this system and let's say yeah. a two dimensional electron gas or quantum well instead of molybdenum and diselenide in there. I so see. I could have spin injection from a ferromagnetic contact into yeah. a two D quantum well. Right, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so can like, yeah. If you could explain a little bit about yeah. the difference between the two I, I think, you know, uh, first is that uh, uh, for two-dimensional two electron gas, right, uh, this kind of approach uh, uh, may be hard because two-dark is really buried down in the, in the, in the hydro structures, right? In the hydro structures. So it's, uh, if you want to approximate it uh, to some uh, magnetic insulator, it's kind of hard. Yeah. But I mean, spin so, injection, as far as we're talking, yeah, spin, spin injection, injection has been yeah, achieved yeah. in yeah, two-dimensional yeah, yeah. quantum yeah, 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 routinely yeah. now. Yeah. You as can, well yeah. as bulk systems. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So sure. Yeah, you can you can definitely do spin injection. However, the for the two dimensional electron gas, uh, that's a system that that that, that, that electron gas doesn't fall, doesn't have any uh, lattice symmetry or it doesn't have any k k momentum, right? So you won't you won't you won't see this uh, uh, what's so called valley correlation. For example, in the, the electronic space of molysulfide, it has this uh, symmetry uh, hexagonal he, uh, hexagonal lattice, right? It has a k and a k prime. Symmetry, yeah. At, at different different k positions, it has a different spin correlation. However, for two-dimensional electron gas, I think even you polarize them, it doesn't have to be associated with the with the momentum of the electron. Yeah, yeah. So that's the that's the difference. So that that's why I mean, in that system, you probably can't create a valley tronics. Yeah, there are basically I think no, there's no valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that material, yeah. Yeah. In addition, just as a small comment. Yeah. Perhaps I, if I understand it correctly, so in the in the molybdenum uh, disulfide, yeah. at large momentum the band is linear, right? So, so it's not a trivial parabolic band; it's a, I guess a hyperbolic band, right. uh, because you know the, the the if you look at momentum far from the middle, oh, far from, yeah. Um, yeah. Far, much larger than the gap, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, by velocity, then because this is a hexagonal structure, the band is linear, so large k. It's a linear, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not parabolic for yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. this in the conventional, which yeah. is important for some applications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. Because it's still hyperbolic, it's still hexagonal, right. so it's yeah, like yeah, your yeah. thing, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Okay, any more? Uh, okay, if not, let's thank Dr. Wei again.